Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of BWD. Today we're gonna learn how to install Spark on our local machine, and specifically I'm gonna go with Linux. Spark has two main dependencies we need to be sure are installed before even trying to install Spark itself, and these are Java and Python. It might be that they are already available on your machine, but let's see how to do it if they are not. So first, let's make sure our package manager is up to date. Let's type sudo apt update. So if this log or a similar one pops out, then type sudo apt upgrade followed by dash y. And this might take a while. While we wait, let me just remember you that if you are new to this channel or you're back watching this video, you can find timestamps in the video description below. And all the code you're gonna see today is available on GitHub. Again, link in the video description below. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Great, now that our package manager is up to date, let's start by installing Java. To check whether you already have it installed on your machine, type Java dash dash version. If you don't get a comma not found log message like this one, then you can skip to the next section. Otherwise, do what follows. So to install Java, all you gotta do is type sudo apt dash get install open dk dash follow by the version. I'm gonna go with 17th and then dash jdk. Then let's add the dash y option to accept whatever is prompt. Once finished, if you type with Java, you should see something like this. And if you don't know what this is, this is simply the path on your machine where the Java binaries are found. Finally, let's check the version. Again, you should see something similar to this. So notice that as the time of recording this video, Spark works with version 8, 11 and 17 of Java. However, Make sure to install the expected Java version, otherwise Spark won't work. To know which version is supported, just check the official documentation. Link in the video description below. Great, now we are left with the second dependency, Python. The steps are similar to what we have just done with Java, so first let's check if we already have Python installed. In my case, as you can see, I have it already. And that's probably is gonna be also your case because we are trying to install Spark on a Linux machine. However, when you type Python dash dash version, just make sure to check for Python 3 and not for Python 2. That's why after the word Python, there is immediately a free there. And if you are wondering why this matters, that's because since 2020, Python 2 is not maintained anymore. So it might be that you have it installed on your machine. If that is the case, it's not a problem but just make sure to have Python 3 also installed. Like for Java, if you are missing Python, then installing it is really easy. All you gotta do is type sudo apt dash get install Python 3. And if the installation is successful, then if you type which Python 3, then you should see a path like this displayed on your screen. All right, now we are finally ready to install Spark. First, let's head over to the Spark official website, and then let's go to the download section. Here we can choose which release we want to download, and even the package type. I'm gonna go with the most recent one, and once we have chosen, we can download the software by clicking on the link at point 3. And here we can click on this URL. So the thing here is that if you are installing Spark on your local machine, then you are good to go you will find the Spark zipped file in the download folder. However, if you want to install it on a remote machine, then this is not the best way. So let's see how we can sort this out. And remember that what I'm about to show you will work both for a remote machine, but also for your local machine. So here, right click on the link and then choose copy link address. Great, now let's go back to our Linux machine and let's download Spark. First of all, Make sure to have wget installed by typing which wget. If you get an output like this, then you're good to go. Otherwise, install it, like we've done for Java and Python using apt. Then type wget and copy the link address. 
As you can see, the download will start right away. Great, now let's check the content of our folder. And here we go. This is the Spark zipped file. To unzip it, you're gonna need tar. Again, make sure to have it installed. And then type tar-xzf followed by the name of the file. So if we check it now, we can see there is a folder and here we're gonna find everything we need to run Spark. Great, now we are almost ready to play with Spark. But why almost? Well, because if we try to type PySpark, for example, as you can see, it says comma not found. But that's simply because even if we have installed Spark, our machine just doesn't know where to look for it. So what we gotta do now is simply saying to the machine where Spark can be found. So let's open the bash rc file. If you don't know what this file is and where it is, don't worry. You can think about it as a configuration file for your bash shell. And you're gonna find it in the user home. And if you don't know where your home is, just copy what you see on my screen and then press enter. Now, what you see in your bash file might differ from what you see on my screen, but that's not a problem. Just go down to the very last line and then add what I'm gonna show you. First, let's write a comment to remember that the code that follows is for configuring Spark. Then let's add the Spark home variable. This is gonna be slash home slash your user. So in my case, it's gonna be bwd, then slash followed by the name of the unzipped folder. Then let's add this to the path variable like this. But do not forget to add to it slash bin because that's where the Spark binaries are gonna be found. Great, now let's not forget to add the export command for both variables. And now let's save and close the file. So now the changes we have just written in the bash file are not immediately available in this shell, but they will if you open a new one. Indeed, if we check the content of the path variable like this, we do not see anywhere the Spark home. To make the changes effective also here in this shell, just type source followed by the path of your bash file. If we check the path variable now, we can find the Spark home path. Great, now let's check if this works. Let's see if we can find any of the shells Spark has available. I'm gonna go with the Python shell. Let's type which PySpark. And here we go. We can also check the Scala shell. And also this one is found. So notice here that both of them are found in the bin folder under the Spark home directory. Great, finally, let's try to run something. Let's pin the Python shell. As you can see, a few logs pop out. So we're gonna dig deeper into them in another episode, so just ignore them for now. And then let's try with a simple query to get the current user. And here we go, it worked. Great, we are finally come to the end of this episode. Do not forget to subscribe if you like it and learn something to not miss the next episode. And with that said, see you in the next one. Ciao!